Thrill Seekers. That song was called A Guy Getting High and Jumping Through the Eye of a Hurricane. And I wrote it like five years ago and didn't know what to do with it. And then I just, I didn't have a song for today. And I found that in the archives and I thought, oh, that's a nice song. And it, it was for, I don't know, I thought maybe I'd write a whole story around the song and explain who the character was and why he was getting high and trying to jump through the eye of a hurricane. But I never finished it. So that's the song. And this thing is my nephew's Goku costume from Dragon Ball Z? Or just Dragon Ball? Okay, he's sitting over there. Anyway, this little symbol is uh, Satoru, Enlightenment. So Satori, when you hear the word Satori, enlightenment, that's how you spell it in Chinese characters with this character. So I thought I would talk about something today that people have asked me about from time to time. In fact, uh, Kim at my uh, publisher at New World Library has asked me to explain this to people. And I think I might have done a video for New World Library trying to explain this. And I think I didn't do a very good job of that, so I'm going to try to do a better job today. And it is why I, I titled my latest book, The Other Side of Nothing, and people say, well, what does the other side of nothing mean? And I thought I'd try to explain what the other side of nothing means. And it comes from a quote from Koben Chino Otogawa Roshi, who was the teacher of my first Zen teacher, whose name is Tim McCarthy. And Koben has passed away, but Tim is still alive. But there are two quotes that I have seen in which Coben uses the phrase, the other side of nothing. And I found both of them online. One of them also appears in a book called, and I can't remember the title of the book, but I'm going to put later on when I go edit this, I'm going to put the title of the book on the screen and you'll be able to read it because I can't remember what it is right now. Anyway, that's the name of the book that's appearing on the screen. And the other one I've never seen in a book before. So here is the one that does not appear in a book, and it appears online in a website about Kobun, and it is called No No Zero. That's two no's and a zero. No No Zero. And here's the quote. And I'm going to give you the whole quote instead of just an excerpt from it. Here goes. A famous Zen teacher, Joshu, said that after 30 years of practice, you may start to speak about it. I have had more time than that with this effort, and yet I am still hesitant to talk. One reason is there is too much to talk about, too deep, and often the talking doesn't help with practice. One must disappear in the sitting. That is the only way. With an advanced practitioner, inner recognition may even seem to be a regressed state or seem absurd. You cannot allow yourself so easily to say, I'm okay. To say, I am Coben, is understandable. To say, I am not Coben, now I am in trouble. And yet, form is emptiness. That's a quote from the Heart Sutra. No eyes, no nose, no ears, everything chopped down and thrown away. Heart Sutra, Nagarjuna, 500 years of Buddhist theories, all put under no. And he's referring to the fact that, and I've talked about this before, if you look at the Heart Sutra, all those no's in the Heart Sutra, so go back and look at my book, uh, well, it's in the other side of nothing, and it's in the book Hardcore Zen, if you want to see my books or just look it up online, there's a whole bunch of no's in the middle of the Heart Sutra, and it's denying basically all of Buddhism. And he goes on to say, this no is more exactly called no, no, zero. What kind of I, what kind of mind can receive this insight of emptiness? The I that sees the relationship of all dharmas, all existences in this relative world is called Igen, wisdom I. The wisdom I observes the relationship of all beings, not just your position, but everything related, interrelated, arising and falling. Whatever comes to the mind, comes to your being, comes to your meditation, is nothing but your portion of this relationship. So whatever is experienced or observed can become the source of teaching. It is very important to experience the complete negation of yourself, which brings you to the other side of nothing. You go to the other side of nothing, and you are held by the hand of the Absolute. You recognize yourself as the Absolute. So naturally, there is no more insistence of a self, of yourself. You cannot even speak of no self within that Absolute. Before this, 
Although everyone is there and helping you, you are a closed system. When you flip to the other side of nothing, you discover everyone, everything, is waiting for you there. That's the end of the quote. Now, here is another quote, and, well, we'll see when we get to the end of this quote. I feel like maybe these, the editors have put things together from different speeches, because I feel like this, this other quote includes the one I just read to you. But here's the one that appears... What are you barking at, Ziggy? <laughs> Ziggy, can I finish my video and then you can bark? Okay, here's the other one. And this one appears in that book that I told you about. So let me read this to you. And maybe Ziggy will just bark. And this one's a little bit longer. We don't do this practice, Zazen, to expecting to obtain something by doing it. This is a very different kind of action. In one sense, it's quitting human business and going to the other side of the human realm. Have you noticed your face changing moment after moment when you are facing the wall doing zazen? When you pay attention to exactly how you feel, you feel how it changes. It is such a slight change that no one would notice it if someone observed you. It's like one flame of fire is sitting on the cushion. That's funny Japanese grammar, because in grammar you have to have a counter for everything, so he says one flame of fire. It, it's just the way you would say it in Japanese. Every moment, the texture of the flame is different. You experience this from morning zazen to night zazen. In every sitting, there's a very different feeling. Each breath, all is different. We experience some kind of dying in sitting, which relates with what's true and what's not true. What's not true dies, so we suffer. We wish to hang on to the self which we believe exists. The contents of what I means or the pieces of the idea of the self are consistent, but when you sit, you observe no substance in those pieces of self. If we try to achieve some awakening or enlightenment, enlightenment right there, we hear that sitting is to clarify the true nature of the self, but it seems nothing is clarified, nothing happens. You just spend the time and have lots of pain and a stumbling mind. That's what my zazen is usually like. If you sit all day, you have a good sitting once or twice, but when you compare the good sitting with the rest, you have a very regretful mind. What was I doing? Drowsy, powerless sitting. That's what sitting is usually like for me, so don't feel bad if it's like that for you. Doubt arises in this. What is it? Is this all right? Are you okay? Your mind is in a different place than sitting. I wish you would sit alone sometime for several days. If you sit alone, although there are many dangerous situations to fall into, you feel you can clarify your right intention, your strict attitude about taking care of yourself. If we sit together like this, that he's talking to a group of people sitting in a, a long form sitting, a retreat together, uh, you think, because other people sit, this must be all right. This must be the way. If something more important then your concern about yourself occurs, of course you quit sitting and plunge into taking care of that. Actually, for each of us, the opportunity of sitting is the same as sitting alone. And then a student asks, For years I always preferred to sit by myself, and every time I had to sit with a group, it was much more difficult. I had problems I didn't have by myself. And Coben answers, The difficulty wasn't sitting together. The difficulty was yourself. Wanting to be alone is impossible. When you become really alone, you notice you are not alone. In other words, we stop our vigorous efforts toward ideal purity. Purity is just a process. After purity, dry simplicity comes, where almost no life is there, and your sensation is that you are not existing anymore. Still, you are existing there. You flip into the other side of nothing, where you discover everybody is waiting for you, before that, you were living together like that. Day, sun, moon, stars, and food, everything is helping you. But you are all blocked off, a closed system. You just see things from inside toward the outside and act with incredible, systematic, logical dynamics, and you think everything is all right. When noise or chaotic situations come, you want to leave that situation to be alone, but there is no such aloneness. It is very important to experience the complete negation of yourself, which brings you to the other side of nothing. People experience that in many ways. You go to the other side of nothing, and you are held by the hand of the Absolute. You see yourself as part of the Absolute, so you have no more insistence of self as yourself. 
You can speak of self as no self upon the absolute. Only real existence is absolute. And that's where the quote ends. And I don't want to put too much on that. It sort of feels like gilding the lily. Is that the phrase? But I've been thinking about this other side of nothing a lot. You know, my, my father passed away and death, you know, gets you thinking about life and death and stuff. And I, I think about my life sometimes. And, you know, my life is, is, is kind of good right now in general. You know, I, I've kind of worked things out to the point where I got things pretty much where I want them, you know. I, I got I got enough of, of what I want. And I'm living in a house that's full of my stuff. You know, I got my dog, I got my wife, my nephew's here visiting, he's sitting over there on the couch. You know, I got my guitars, I got my little YouTube channel that I do, I got my books, I got my career, I got everything together. You know, and then something comes along, like my dad dying, and I think, oh yeah, I'm going to lose everything. <laughs> you know, we're all going to lose everything, one way or another. And then I think, well, you know, I've been working on this, this teaching, this practice, which talks about losing everything all the time. This whole practice, this whole Zen practice is about giving up everything. So you give it over to the absolute. You, you, you give everything away. That's, that's what Zazen practice is, moment by moment, just giving up everything. When, you, when you're sitting zazen, you're sitting there letting go of everything. So letting go of yourself moment by moment, every want, every desire you have, everything that you feel you need from this moment, everything you'd rather be doing, you know, anything you want, you just let it all go and you're trying to kind of there's there's a song and i think this the the title of this song it's by a band called ohm who used to be well i think they're now sleep again they used to be called sleep and then they were called ohm and now i think they're called sleep again they're kind of a stoner metal band but they had a song when they were ohm called meditation is the practice of death and i think it came from a i think it came uh, the, it came from a quote from some yogi or something but in a way meditation is sort of the practice of death you're sort of you're sort of mimicking death <laughs> as you sit there on your cushion. And, and one of the famous phrases, I think Joshu Sasaki used to say this, and some other Zen people say this, is, is die on your cushion, you know. So you're giving up everything. You're sort of dying into the moment. People talk about that. And that can feel really scary, you know, like I'm giving up everything, you know, but I want to have all this this stuff, you know. I want to have all my guitars and my stuff and my Mad Magazine collection, you know, if you're me, and my and my little house and my and my dog, who, Ziggy's sitting over here, you can't see him, you know, and my wife and my stuff and my life and the things I have. And I don't want to give all that up, you know. My, my, my dad gave it all up, you know, by dying, and, and we're all going to give it all up by dying. And, and so even if we become uh, Elon Musk or somebody, you know, who has every goddamn thing in the world you're you're still gonna have to give it all up and that that can feel like a frightening prospect but then you have somebody like Coben come along and he says you flip to the other side of nothing and everything is waiting for you and Nisargadatta Maharaj who I quoted from yesterday he says stuff like that and all the great mystics say stuff like that in my own experience with Zen and my own little little small moments of uh, Satoru and awakening I've seen that. I've glimpsed that. I've 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 been there. You know, uh, visited the other side of nothing for a couple of moments here, there, here and there, and seen how, you know, that's true. It's it's all waiting for you. There's you don't give up anything. Uh, you, 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 so, all the all the stuff is still there, but it's it's. Uh, but you have to give up yourself to 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 uh, to contain all of it. I know it just sounds weird. Anyway, if you want to contribute to me getting more stuff, you can go. Sorry, I just wanted to end the video. You can go to the URL you're seeing on the screen below. Let me see if I can point the right way. 
which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. I think I'm pointing to the right places, maybe not. Hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is where you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are my main and usually only ways of making a living, and I really appreciate your support. But as always, this is offered for free, so you don't have to support me if you don't want to support me. Anyway, have a good time all the time. We will see you later. Uh, yeah, that's the end of the video. Uh, Bizels, bye. There's Ziggy. He's been sitting here the whole time I've been doing the video, just hanging out in his little, in his little bed. All right, Ziggy. Talk to you later.